So this is what an ear tree is. So how do we go about actually building it? <coughs> so I'll kind of just like go over what it would be adding to the letters. Ear trees work online. Uh, the graph is maintained after every character that you sort of append to your current string. So initially we start with the null node and the empty string, and we just initialize the suffix length. So in an ear tree, we are going to keep a pointer to the last node that we've seen, which is essentially, after some character that we add, what's the longest palindromic suffix ending at that character? And by default, we start at the empty string. So now we're going to add uh, an E onto our string. So it's kind of weird for um, when you're adding things to one character. So instead I'll just talk about what happens um, in the general sense. So let's say that um, this is, so far, this is the string we've added, and then the longest palindromic suffix of our string is Q, which is this here. And now we're adding a new character here, which is going to be S. So the longest um, palindromic suffix, starting, um, starting at the S that we just added, is going to be, um, if we follow for Q, it's the suffix length. Um, it's going to be of the form our new like our new palindrome that will be the longest suffix here. It's going to be of the form S T S, where P is some is either Q or some suffix uh, palindrome of Q. So if we like if we maintain like what Q suffix links are, we'll just look at Q. And for each node, we can store the length of the node because it's just um, when you make a new edge from one thing to another, the new length is like two plus what you came from because we're just appending to both sides, and like the length of the null node is negative one. So like here, so we look at Q is like the last thing we have, so we'll check this right here, and if there isn't S, then the longest suffix palindrome of our new string is going to be like S Q S. And then, so we look at Q, and if it doesn't have this outgoing edge labeled with S, then we need to make this new node, and so we will. Otherwise, if there's no like S here, then we try like to use suffix length and see if maybe if there's an S here, and if not, we'll just continue going until we find one. And we might end up at the null node, but once we end up at the null node, we'll just be checking this S with itself, and we'll say, okay, we found our longest suffix palindrome, it's just S. So that's how after we add like a new node, we can figure out what the new longest suffix palindrome is. Now, then we can like create this edge here. So now what we need to do is we'll need to create uh, the suffix link for this. And so, the suffix length can be created for this guy the same way. Essentially, we're just going to, before we started our search in Q for like S, some palindrome, and then S, our suffix length, we can start at Q's suffix length. Like, I'll sort of bring up the code. So the constructor, um, you're just sort of like initializing all the stuff. Uh, index zero is going to be like this, the empty string, and index one is going to be this null string. So this is just initializing it. I set uh, both of these two nodes suffix length to be the negative one node. So this void add character, like you can sort of follow along in your paper, it's probably I can zoom in. Like this uh, add character function, we're just going to call it on each character as we go along in our string. So S is just like an array of what our current string looks like. Um, and in the constructor, we just 
say that the index of zero is going to be negative one. This is to avoid like index out of bounds thing when we do certain searches. But so here we're going to look for for adding c, we're going to look for c compound from q and then c. So um, we're going to say in q is equal to get link of last. And so like last is the latest palindrome, the longest palindromic suffix of right before us. So this get link is what I explained before. It's like while uh, the character preceding this palindrome is not the one we just added, we just follow the suffix link. And then it returns v either when we found one, or it'll eventually find one because if we eventually get to the null string, it'll just compare the character with itself. So we get this. And so now we need to make the edge of the labeled edge from Q with like the character C. And so if it's not initialized yet, we'll need to create it. And so uh, this here, link of size. So like size is how many nodes we currently have. So size right now is equal to like what the next thing we're adding is. So now the suffix length for the new node we're adding is basically we're going to do the same search except we're going to start at the suffix length of q um, instead of like q itself. And so our length is just going to be the length of q plus 2 because we're appending 2 to both sides. And then this is just saying that from q taking the character c we'll go to our next node and then we increase the number of nodes in our tree. And then this last line is just saying okay update the current longest um, suffix bound from it at this index. I won't prove it now, but um, when you do like add a character, you, you're only ever adding one new unique palindrome to the string. So we only need to create at most one new node per um, per character that we add. And so this may sort of seem like n squared ish, but if you like follow the suffix length, because like this here is we're just like looping through the suffix length to eventually like find something. However, if we have some string, and let's say our current suffix link is right here, whenever we like follow the path searching through our palindrome, this endpoint is moving to the right. And then um, whenever we like add one more character, it moves to the left once. So it can move to the right at most n times plus one for each character we add. So this moves like at most two n times, and then this is for like the uh, the suffix link, and then we're also like um, doing the second suffix link search, but that sort of has the same property. So it's four n worth case for adding all the characters. So your trees are linear on the number of characters that you add. Um, there's a lot of bleed through here now, but I'll. For now, um, I think I'll just sort of like start moving to problems bit since we don't have as much time as I thought. But I guess I'll ask, does anyone does anyone want me to like go through creating the ear tree, or is it like kind of good with how it, with the structure of what it is? Okay. So I'll go to the first problem. The first problem is pretty easy. This was on. Uh, to set. I have links to all the problems uh, posted in the Discord and also the link to the paper that I mainly use for a lot of information. Cool. So the problem is the Tomat set, palindromic finder. You're given some string and you want to know if there are palindromes of length greater than or equal to 3. Obviously, you can just sort of loop through the string, check palindromes of length 3 and 4 naively, but uh, so this is just like a sort of a good starting problem. I kind of already had the solution there. But we know as we build our ear tree that we, we know the length of the node like as we make it. So as I explained before, in our ear tree, when we're making an edge from palindrome A to palindrome B, uh, the length of B is going to be 2 plus the length of A. And as I said before, the length of the null string is negative 1. The length of the empty string is 0. So what you can do, you can just add all your characters to the ear tree and then check if there's any node in the ear tree with length greater than or equal to 3. I think Charles did that solution. There's someone. Yeah, I do. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that's found in my finder. It's because I saw the power of it and I was being too stupid. Now we're going to go over Talent Drums and Super <coughs> and Super Abilities. This uh this problem is on like it's not on Gopher, this is on some random site that you can still submit to it. So this problem is you're given some string f, obviously bound to uh, tenths of bits, and you want to count the number of unique pound zones for each prefix of f. So, for example, if we just have like a b a, the prefix of a has one pound zone, and that's just a. The prefix of a b has a and b, and the, pre and the prefix a b a has a. B, A, B, A. So you would print one, two, three. So since uh, I said before, um, an ear tree, each node in the ear tree represents a unique palindrome that appears in the string, and this works online, and that most, after we add a character, there's one node that we add. So for this problem, we can just insert char our characters into the ear tree one by one, and then the total number of unique palindromes so far is going to be the number of nodes in the ear tree minus two. And this minus two is because we don't count the empty string or the null string. So next we'll get into uh, this is for unique palindromes. But what if we wanted the total number of palindromes instead of just unique? So this is where the property properties of the ear tree really help where uh, the suffix length here will form a tree rooted at negative one here. So, sorry, just block off the rest so far. So we're going to maintain an extra value in each node, which is going to be um, number of links. This is going to be the number of positive length palindromes in the suffix length path from this node to the negative one node. So like here, this um, palindrome RCR, its num length value will be two because we have RCR and then R, and then since this is um, zero length, we don't count it, and then we eventually get here. Uh, at the bottom of this gear tree, its value is going to be three, because we have one, two, three, and then we eventually get the null node. And so this, this node here, um, its number of length being three, means that if this node is the longest palindromic suffix ending at some index, then that the number of palindromes total that end at this index is the number of links this guy has. Because if we have ear tree ending at some index, then we also have ee -E and then e that ends at that index as well. And so um, we can maintain this by whenever you add a um, palindrome to your tree, you say its number of links is one, and then you add the number of links of its suffix length once you create that. It's that is explained here when adding a new character. The new number of links is one plus the number of links of my suffix length. And so, and so now, since we just want the total number of palindromes, after we add each character, the total number of palindromes that we just added to the string, which is the number ending at this index, is going to be um, number of lengths of whatever the last node is that we have. Not like the last node created, but just like in the implementation, we have like the last node, which is just the longest suffix palindrome so far. And so I couldn't find a problem to submit like for this, but um, this is how you would count total instead of unique. Well, actually, there's a problem later where you'll, you'll, where you'll need to count the total. There's just other stuff you need to do as well. So also, like this, num the num length, like we can maintain that, and it works because we know that the structure is a tree, and we're just adding like new leaves onto this tree as we go along. Next problem I'm going to talk about is just simply called palindrome from 
the string learn set one. So for this problem, for some for some string f, you want to find the max value of length of p times the number of occurrences of p, where p is some palindrome, and the number of occurrences of p is just how many times this palindrome appears as uh, a substring in f. So for example, if we just had, let's say, a, 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 we could do a, which occurs three times and its length is one. We can do a, a, which occurs twice, its length is two. Or we can do a, 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 which occurs once and its length is three. So the answer would be four. You don't have to like build back your answer, but you just have to confirm what it is. Here would be two times two. So we know how to count like the total number of conjoints so far. But the issue right now is like the tree is so let's say uh, once we add a character, ear tree is like the uh, longest palindrome ending at that index. Well what we can do is we can keep a value which is like the number of occurrences of some palindrome. And when we get here, we're like, okay, this palindrome appeared appears one more time because like this ends is the new index we added. Then one thing we could do is like follow the suffix length and just say, okay, this palindrome occurs one more time, this one occurs one more time, this one occurs one more time, and so on. Um, like we could do that for every index and that will get us the right answer. However, that's too slow because these suffix lengths can be um, linear in the length of the root. So instead what we can do is since we realize that this structure is a tree, what essentially we're doing is we're just adding one to a node in the tree, uh, and then we want to basically add one from the path from this node to the root. Now, you can do that with like, since we're building the tree dynamically, you can do it with like some structures like a link test tree or whatever. But there's like uh, an easier solution since we can solve this problem offline. So as I said, for each node, we can We'll just store how many times this node with the longest palindromic suffix for some index. So we're not going to update the whole path, we're just for our, the last node that we're at, we're just going to add one to its value. And as I mentioned, if for some index i, the longest palindromic suffix is node a, then all palindromes on the suffix path from a to the root, all of those palindromes will occur ending at index i. Um, they'll appear one more time. So what we can do is we can just add one to all the nodes we can, as like we go along, and then we can top sort these nodes uh, based on the suffix length. It's like it's, it is a top sort, but essentially you just now you're just BFSing from the leaves of this tree, and then you're like propagating your values to go up. So when we're processing a node B, uh, we'll say the number of occurrences of B's suffix length uh, plus equals the number of occurrences of B. Because however many times V occurred, V's suffix length is also going to occur that many times. So uh, after we add all our letters to the string, uh, we do this, and then at the end, we just loop through every node and take the max of occurrences of that node times the length value for that node. Next problem I'm going to cover is tally section. This is code forces beta round 17. Now you don't have to like remember these, the links are in the Discord. So in this problem, um, we're going to consider a list of all occurrences of all palindromes and some string S. So like a palindrome can occur multiple at the times. So we'll like consider that as multiple occurrences in this list. We want the number of pairs of palindromes in this list such that like the two palindromes share some index of S in common. It's a kind of, I'll go over an example to help show it. So if our string is just B-A-B-A, -A, we have this B-A-B -B sharing some index with B, we have the B-A-B -B sharing with A, and then we have the B-A-B -B sharing with B. Also B-A-B -B shares indexes in common with A-B-A, -A, which is also a palindrome, so that's here. And then likewise, a, B, A shares um, an index with A, B, and A. And so the answer for this string is going to be 7. Uh, so the bound 
to have been like 10 to the fifth. Uh, and this one has a pretty quick time limit. So for this one, it's kind of hard to count the number that overlaps because there's a, a lot going on there. If it says, like with a lot of other problems, we can try to count uh, the opposite. So let's count the number of pairs that do not overlap. So if there's some pair that doesn't overlap, it means you have some palindrome here and some palindrome to the right of it. And then I'll just denote index i is where the first palindrome ends. So if we knew for some index i how many palindromes ended at i, then the number of things this palind the number of ways those palindromes, so the number of palindromes that these compare with will be all the palindromes that start after i. So for every palindrome ending at i, the number of pairs this index contributes is going to be the sum of the palindromes that start from i plus 1 to n, and then like times the number of palindromes that do end at i. So we know how to figure out the number of palindromes that end at some index before I talk about that num link value. And, when a pal and after you add some index, you check the number of links for the longest palindromic suffix. And so that's the number of palindromes that end at this index. So we can just create this array. So now we want the array of um, for each index the amount that starts there. And so like with many string problems, what you can do, you can reverse the string and then um, just build the ear tree going backwards. And now you'll have for each index how many starts there. So as, as mentioned, there's like this num link thing. Then if we build the ear tree like set on the reverse string, we can find the total number of palindromes that start every index. And so then you can you can use a bit or you can just tweak from right to left, maintaining how many started to the right of you. And your answer is like the number that ended my current index times however many I've seen before me. And then obviously since we counted the number of pairs that don't work, our final answer is the total number of palindromes, choose two, minus the number of bad pairs. And as I discussed earlier, we know how to keep track of the total number of palindromes because we know for each index we add how many palindromes ended there. So now going to get into the last problem, but this is a pretty tough problem and introduces <coughs> a lot of new things. There's like six pages that have for this problem. So this problem is palindrome partition from a code forces round to the div 1g. So we want to count the number of ways to split the string s into k substrings such that um, like the substring of i, the i substring is equal to the k minus i plus 1 substring for all i, and k is even. So essentially we have some string here. And this is one way of partitioning it. This kb is equal to ab, cc is equal to cc. This is another way of partitioning it. Um, you're, you're guaranteed that the input string is even length, which is nice. And that also, like, we have to split it such that k is even. Then we can do like different k, like here, k is 4, and then k is 6 here. So the answer to this string is going to be called palindrome partition, because if you gave each of these strings like the unique ID based on the string, then that ID would be palindromic. So let's consider like, like essentially what we're matching here. So 1 through 10, I'll say like these are the indices of our string. So one thing is we can match like 2 to 7, 3 to 8, and 4 to 9. Like if, if these were equal, then this would be like valid. So we have index that 2 is equal to 7, 3 is equal to 8, and 4 is equal to 9. If we imagine that our indices, like we, if we rewrote them like this, then this being equal is the equivalent to this being a palindrome. 
So obviously this, this is like just for these characters here. So like I said, if um, these two substrings are equal, then it means this string is a pound string, if we interlace them like this. So what we can do is we can interlace the indices like this, going forward and then going forward for the first n over 2, and then interlacing it with going backwards for the next n over 2. And even 2? Yeah, n is even. The string they give you is guaranteed even, <coughs> which is nice. So we'll come up with this string here. And so now, now like this new string has a property such that every even length palindrome in this string that starts at an even index well, is going to correspond to a match in our original string. Like here, this 1, 10, 2, 9 corresponds to uh, the 1, 2, and the 9, 10 here. So if 1 was A, 9 was A, 2 was B, and 10 was B, then we have this match. See, if 1 is A, 9 is A, 10 is B, 2 is B. So now, now that we have this string, the problem reduces to we want to find the number of ways to partition a string into even length palindromes. And since we're guaranteed that the string is even length, we're guaranteed uh, that all the partitions <laughs> we're making our palindromes on are uh, even index. So we can try a DP. So DP of i is going to store the number of ways to partition the prefix of length i into even length palindromes. And then, pretty much dp of i for all length prefixes is just going to be 0, always. So our base case is, if we have like the empty string, then there, or this should be 1. There is one way to partition the empty string into even length bound row. Because like, obviously we need a base case, and if we got to the empty string, then it means we like fulfilled everything, so this is 1. So we can do some DP where for some index i, um, we're just going to loop over all the palindromes ending at i. We're going to loop over all the even length palindromes. By we can for each index we can store like when we added this index what the longest palindromic suffix was, and so we can just follow its suffix length and consider all palindromes that have even length. And so DP of i is going to be the sum over all even like palindromes in the suffix length path of dp of i minus the length of p because if we're at some index i here and we are considering some even like palindrome p, then obviously once we add p, then we already know the number of ways for like this prefix here, how many ways we can partition that. So this will be the answer for some index, and this is going to be correct, but alas, it's uh, n squared in the worst case, because there could be a linear number of um, palindromic suffixes, and they have some string. This case isn't hard to make, it's just has a bit age. So, although this DP is too slow, um, the final solution is going to just be this DP. We can find a way to speed it up to n log n. So well, like, why is this slow? Well, obviously, it's because the transition of order n, because we're looping over all suffixes um, of the palindrome that ended at some index. We can improve this to log n by storing an additional internal DP value in the ear tree, and also introducing two more values to um, our node. So the two new values we're going to store in the ear tree are uh, called dif and then the series link. So um, in the code I have, there's just the regular edges and, and suffix links. The code we have in the hack pack also has these what are called series links. And if you're using the hack pack, it's kind of confusing because series and suffix both start with an S. But for our hack pack, link is the suffix link, S link is the series link. <laughs> I, I might end up like rewriting the hack pack later. Also, 
just like a note, if you end up like actually like going through the one we have in the hack pack, there's a small bug where <laughs> the empty string suffix link is negative one, but the null, the null node suffix link actually points to here. But in almost any problem, that won't matter since both of these nodes are just going to have a zero value anyway. But I was looking through that and yeah. Like most of the problems I solved, I just resubmitted with both of them and they just don't work. Because your values are just always zero there anyway. But if you go through it and you like look, you just realize that's what's happening. But so now back to these two values. Diffify is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be the difference in length between my node and my suffix length. So for here, the diff value of your tree is going to be the length of this times the length of this, which is 5. For this node, it's going to be the length of this minus the length of this, which is 4, and so on. That's going to be diff. And then the series length of i is going to be the first node along the first node v along the suffix length path, such that the diff of v is not equal to the diff of i. And I will not prove it, but the path of series link to the root is going to be log n deep. Uh, the paper doesn't even prove it, it links to like another paper and some other lemmas. Um, log n, not root n? It will be log n. Okay. It, that, uh, you, you can read the paper and then read the paper it refers to if you would like. <laughs> All right. It's <laughs> like HLD. So it's just like, you know, the paper just says, based on properties of palindromes from this paper, we know it's log n. But, like, what I was talking about, uh, 1125, so, yeah, I might not end up getting to this whole thing, but, like, you don't really need to know why it's log n, but what I get, if I could get to it later, what you really need to know is just sort of what goes on after, assume, after you assume it's log n. So how do we maintain these? When adding a new node to the tree, the diff is easy. We just take the length of our node, subtract the length of our suffix length. Now for the series length, like this, the first node along the suffix length path, such that its diff is different. So if my diff is equal to the diff of my suffix length, then my series length will just be his series length. Otherwise, my series length is just him. So, maintaining these two is pretty easy. Using them is pretty difficult, though. So, we're going to rewrite our DP. So, before, we just, for some node, we just loop through all the suffix links. Now, however, um, we can loop through sort of the series link. And so, this top for loop will run log n time. So we have this top path, which is log in. We're essentially just looping through the series length. So eventually, we get to the null node, and then we're going to loop through the suffix length between these nodes. And this path is going to be called an, uh, like this, a series. So essentially, like our top, top for loop, we're just skipping through our log n series length, and then the bottom for loop is we're like following the um, path between them. And so uh, the top lap is this top part is log n, but the bottom part um, can sum up to linear. But so our UP would now look so like this, where we loop through our um, series length, and then we loop through from that node to the next node in the series length, and we go there via the suffix length. And so then dp of i is plus equals dp of i minus the length of q, where q is even. So this is just the same dp that we had earlier, we just sort of split it up into two for loops. And so the semi-magical thing is the second for loop, we can completely get rid of it. So like here, the first loop is over the series length path, and the second loop is over the suffix length between the series length. So 
So consider the suffix length path from P to the series length, which is this orange path here. It's possible that um, like its suffix length is the series length, so the orange path might not have any nodes. But we're going to consider like um, the exclusive to exclusive path, which means like strictly the nodes in here. So this is also something I will not prove, um, partly because of time constraints as well, but this is actually explained in the paper though. The first node along this path here will appear exactly two times, like this node here will appear exactly two times as a substring of this node. That will be as a prefix and a suffix. What's that, so what that looks like, we have some palindrome B, then the first node along this path is going to appear exactly two times. So it's a suffix and it's a prefix. So obviously because of properties of palindrome, if your palindrome appears as a suffix, it's going to also appear as a prefix. Now the hard part of the proof, which I won't go over, is that you can show that it won't appear in between. So, because by definition of like what the series links are, the nodes along these paths all have like the same difference in length between them and their suffix length. So let's look at like what are what we're actually accessing from our DP as we go along this path. This looks just like the picture in the paper. It's a it is. Basically, it's a picture in the paper with color. Oh. And since I probably won't like fully get to explain some stuff, I do advise reading the paper. It's very helpful, and it's like not super tough to get through. Like anyone here, if they like read through it, slowly, they could understand it. So this top bar is just like representing our string itself. So V is like the current um, pound term we're looking at. Like this is V here. So these green, um, these green like things here is uh, the suffix length of V. Because we know their diffs are the same, like these green, um, these green lines here represent like the series path of actually like these orange nodes here. So we'd be accessing this index in our DP, this index in our DP, and this index in our DP. This orange line here is the start of the next path. This, I kind of flipped the card, but this orange line represents this node here, which is like the start of our next path, so we don't consider him. So, also, like what I won't fully go over is um, whenever, uh, when we're looking at V, we, uh, we can know that the V suffix length, we would have processed him uh, when he was a prefix of us. So if like this is V here, and um, we can look at V's suffix length, which we'll say is like when he occurred as a prefix. Because he also has the same diff, this guy, if we looped over his suffix length, we'd access this index here, and this index here as well, but not this index, because this index would have been the start of this guy's um, path in this next series. So it's kind of like hard to really prove what's going on here, but what's important uh, is that you know like what you're actually accessing and how it's uh, used. So essentially, for we want to know for B the sum of these indices here. Um, and we know just like how, how it's formulated, we assume that we've already covered B suffix length earlier. And B suffix length would have covered these two values. It would, have it would have covered all the values in here, except for this one that we need here. And we know this guy's index is going to be the length of our current string minus, like I won't go over exactly this, but if you like look through it, this index is going to be this here. Are we DPing online or offline? Our DP is going to be online. Gotcha. 
like as we add each character. So let's, if we just had an internal DP for each node storing the values for everything it saw the last time we processed it, these suffix links would have these two nodes here in its like internal values. Um, so when we're looking at D, we need to just access this guy normally from our DP, and then we just access these um, suffix link internal DP thing. And so this is equivalent as just like looping over all these values here. So this is like kind of hard to understand. Um, it did take me like actually a couple days of reading through it. Um, so if you want to like fully understand it, you should go read through the paper multiple times. But so now we can reformulate our DP. So the same green, I'll just have like regular DP. This is our normal DP. DP of i stores like how many ways you can partition i. The prefix of like i, even like palindrome. And then we're going to have this um, DPS, which is like the internal DP in our tree. And so after we add some character, like v is going to be the longest public palindrome missing at i. So this top for loop is equivalent to what we had before. We're going to loop through the series length of v, which um, is log n in depth. So then we're going to, um, essentially we're just going to get the internal value for the node we're looking at and then update our current dp with its value at the end. Or like, so this here, the internal dp for our current thing we're looking at, it's kind of flipped, like here it's p, but here it's v, but these two are the same. The internal value for p we're, uh, we have this pound from here, we're essentially just setting its internal value to this index here, which is, um, since we're accessing this index from like our actual DP, we just access our DP at that length. So now, um, we have this if check here. If P, if the diff of P is equal to the diff of its suffix length, then it means we have a non-trivial path. It means like there's actually nodes that exist here, if the diff of b was, or if the diff of p was not equal to the diff of the suffix link, it would just point directly to the next node we want to go to. But since we don't want to overcount it, we only uh, consider this path if our diffs are different, because that's when we would, or if our diffs are equal, because that's when we would have the path of equal diffs. So if they are equal, that means like we need, we still need to consider all of these nodes here. So we update our internal DP value of our current node with the internal DP with his suffix link, which is essentially, so we have V, we just manually get this index, and then we look at our suffix link and he would have already had everything before us stored in his internal DP. And so like that's our new internal DP value. And so now we just update our actual DP with, um, the current node's internal value. And this, like if I'm on two equal to zero check, is just like to make sure we're only um, partitioning starting at even length, um, even like uh, indices, or even index indices. Um, uh, we kind of have to just like cut off now, I guess. I mean, we've got five minutes. I thought you said 11.25. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. So, yeah, it's kind of like hard to um, wrap your head around this, but the important thing that you understand is you can kind of pack pack this structure, like you can have these lines in here, and as long as you understand that, so this line here, um, you don't change. Uh, this line um, is just setting this guy's current value to like this index. Um, so this line doesn't change, this line doesn't, but this line here, um, oops, oh, it's on, it's on. Yeah. so if you're sort of like hack packing this, which you kind of can if you understand what's going on, uh, this line doesn't change, this line here is just sort of your update value with your DP, essentially like you have 
you treat this as like you have your current value and you're going to some state, how would you update your answer? Well, like in our situation, we just want to count everything, so we just add him. And then this line here is also just like dependent on your CP. But uh, uh, essentially, you just have like your current, your actual DP. You just um, add the internal values of the node, and we're adding here because we're just counting. The example they give in the paper is uh, instead of the number of ways, we want to partition it into. So instead of the number of ways, let's say we wanted to partition it into the minimum number of even length palindromes instead of adding everything. So you can just have the same structure, except now instead of plus equals, you say like this would be min with one plus this. Because we can come from here and add ourselves. And so this um, would be the same thing here. This would be, or it depends how you do it. Like if you do the one plus thing here, um, you wouldn't do it here. But here you can just say dp, like the internal dp of p equal to the min of this, and what its current value is, then here you set dp of i equals 1 plus the internal values of the node. Because if the internal values um, just would have stored everything before it, um, then this you need to add the one here. I, I think it actually is better to do the 1 plus here because then your internal dp value would be messed up if you do that here. So I'll just like go over it again. So if you wanted to set this uh, partition our uh, string to the minimum number of even length palindromes, like this line just doesn't change. This line, you say, okay, our current like internal dp value, we'll min it with what our current answer is, and then one plus what we're considering going to. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel weird.